Right now, you are floating in the center of an endless, silent ocean. Not an ocean of water, but of perfect, absolute darkness. There are no stars. No distant, glittering galaxies. No light, in any direction, for as far as your eyes could ever see. You are in the loneliest place in the entire universe. Welcome to the Boote's Void. We call it, the Great Nothing. It is a hole in the cosmos. A region of space so vast, so empty, it defies our understanding of how the universe is supposed to work. This is not just a dark patch of sky. It is a vacuum. An abyss. A scar. It is a near-perfect sphere of emptiness stretching 330 million light-years across. To put that number into perspective, the distance from our own Milky Way galaxy to our nearest major neighbor, Andromeda, is about 2,500,000 light-years. You could fit 130 of those distances, end-to-end, -end, inside this void. If our own galaxy were at the very center of this emptiness, we would not have known that other galaxies even existed until the 1960s. We would have looked out into the night sky and seen nothing but our own island, and concluded, quite logically, that we were completely and utterly alone. How can a place like this exist? You see, the universe is not just a random spray of galaxies thrown into the dark. It has a structure. On the very largest scales, the cosmos is organized into something we call the cosmic web. Imagine a gigantic sponge. The material of the sponge, the fibers and strands, are unimaginably long filaments of dark matter. And stretched along these filaments, like dew on a spider's web, are the galaxies. Trillions of them. They are clustered together where the filaments cross, forming superclusters of galaxies. And in between these glowing filaments, there are holes. There are gaps. We call them voids. These are the empty bubbles in the cosmic sponge. And they are a normal, natural part of the universe. But the Boote's void is not a normal bubble. It is a statistical impossibility. If the universe is a sponge, then the Boote's void is a gigantic, gaping hole where the sponge itself seems to have been torn away. It is so large that it represents a significant fraction of the entire observable universe. If the cosmos had formed according to our models, a void of this magnitude should simply not exist. The gentle, random pull of gravity should have never allowed this much nothing to gather in one place. It is an error in the code. A glitch in the matrix. A place where the fundamental blueprint of the cosmos appears to be broken. Something incredible is happening in the comments. Last week, on our video about the two trillion hidden galaxies, a user named Voidwalker asked, what if the great attractor is just the edge of another void? What's your theory about this great nothing? Is it a natural error, or something, else? Drop your theory below. I read every single comment, and the most mind-bending ideas always find their way into our future explorations. And if you, too, feel the pull of these cosmic mysteries, if you want to understand the architecture of reality, hit that subscribe button. Because what comes next, will challenge the very idea of what natural means. The story of its discovery is a perfect example of science finding what it was not looking for. In 1981, astronomer Robert Kirshner and his team were conducting a survey of the heavens. They were mapping the universe, measuring the distances to galaxies in different patches of the sky. The work was slow, painstaking. They would point their telescope, find a galaxy, measure its redshift, and add another data point to the great cosmic map. They pointed their instruments toward the constellation Boötes. And they found a galaxy. Then another. And then, nothing. They shifted their aim slightly. Nothing. They shifted again. Still nothing. At first, they must have assumed their equipment was failing. Or perhaps they were just looking at an unusually sparse patch of sky. But they kept looking. They pushed deeper into that patch of darkness, expecting to find the normal background hiss of the cosmos, the average number of galaxies our models predicted. The nothing continued. For millions of light years, their instruments returned a flat line. Silence. It was not a sparse patch. It was a hole. 
One of the researchers, in a moment of profound understatement, said, if the Milky Way had been in the center of the Boötes void, we wouldn't have known there were other galaxies, until the 1960s. They had found a place where the universe had apparently forgotten to put anything. This void, this great nothing, is so large that it should contain at least 10,000 galaxies. 10,000 Milky Ways. Instead, in that vast, 330 million light-year expanse, we have found only 60. 60 galaxies, where there should be 10,000. They are not even spread out. They are all clustered together in a single, lonely filament, a tiny, fragile tube of matter, itself floating in the middle of this incomprehensible emptiness. It is like finding a single, tiny boat in the middle of an ocean the size of North America. By the way, the cosmic bio community is incredible. People here are not afraid to ask the biggest what-if questions. The debates in the comments about parallel universes and simulation theory are some of the most intelligent discussions on the entire platform. Jump in. Share your thoughts. Let's try to make sense of this emptiness together. Now, here's where the real mystery begins. This void is not just strange because it is big. It is strange because it is old. According to our standard model of cosmology, the universe began with the Big Bang. Matter was spread out almost perfectly uniformly. Over time, gravity pulled matter together. The dense places became denser, forming the filaments of the cosmic sponge. The less dense places became emptier, forming the voids. But this process is slow. It is like watching tiny streams of water erode a landscape. To create small voids, you need time. To create a void as large as Boötes, you need more time than the universe has actually had. Our models cannot build this. They cannot produce a hole this big, this fast. The math falls apart. This emptiness should not exist. So, if nature did not do this, if the slow, steady hand of gravity and cosmic expansion could not have possibly carved out this abyss. What did? The math does not work. The universe, according to our best understanding, simply has not existed for long enough to create this. The slow, patient work of gravity, pulling matter into the great cosmic sponge, cannot account for a hole of this magnitude. It is too big, too empty, and it formed too early. We are staring at a piece of cosmic architecture that should not exist. So, what are the options? The first, and most mainstream scientific explanation, is that we are simply looking at a cosmic anomaly. A one in a billion chance. The theory is known as void merging. Imagine the early universe as a bath full of soap suds. The bubbles are the voids. Over time, smaller bubbles merge to form larger ones. The idea is that the Boötes void is not a single entity, but the result of many smaller, normal voids that happen to be near each other. Over billions of years, they collided. They merged. They grew, like a confluence of empty rivers, finally coalescing into this one great nothing. This is the most likely natural explanation. But it is not a comfortable one. It stretches our models of statistics to their absolute breaking point. For this to have happened, the universe would have had to have a near-perfect arrangement of smaller voids, all collapsing in just the right way. It is statistically, wildly, fantastically improbable. It is the universe dealing itself a perfect royal flush. It is possible. But it feels unsatisfying. It is an answer that basically amounts to what just happened. If your mind is struggling to accept this cosmic accident, tap that like button. It helps the algorithm show this impossible mystery to more curious minds. And trust me, the alternative explanation is where the true terror lies. This is where we leave the safe harbor of established cosmology. This is where we stop asking what nature did, and start asking, what if something else did? If the void is not a natural formation, then it must be an artificial one. This brings us to one of the most terrifying concepts in all of science, the Kardashev scale. In the 1960s, a Soviet astronomer named Nikolai Kardashev proposed a way to classify intelligent civilizations. Not by their culture, or their biology, but by the only thing that truly matters on a cosmic scale, their energy consumption. A type 1 civilization, he proposed, is a species that has learned to harness all the energy available on its home planet. 
all the solar, wind, geothermal, and fusion power. We are not there yet. We are, maybe, a Type 0.7. A Type 2 civilization is far more advanced. It has outgrown its planet and has learned to harness the total energy output of its home star. The most famous concept for this is the Dyson Sphere. A civilization that builds a megastructure, a shell, completely around its star, capturing 100% of its light and power. And then, there is Type 3. A civilization so advanced, so godlike, it has outgrown its own star. It has learned to harness the energy of its entire galaxy. All 100 billion to 400 billion stars. This idea has fascinated science fiction writers for decades. But astronomers have been forced to ask a very serious and very unsettling question. If a Type 3 civilization exists, what would it look like? The answer is, we would not see them. We would only see the absence they leave behind. Imagine a Type 2 civilization builds a Dyson sphere around its star. From our perspective, that star would vanish from the visible spectrum. It would just go dark. Now, imagine a Type 3 civilization doing this to every star in its galaxy. A billion star empire, systematically enclosing every sun, one by one, to power its unimaginable needs. The entire galaxy would dim. It would fade. It would go dark, leaving behind only a faint signature of waste heat in the infrared spectrum. Now, take one final, horrifying leap. What if that civilization did not stop at one galaxy? What if they were an intergalactic empire? What if they needed more? They would expand to the next galaxy. And the next. And the next. They would cross the void, bringing their technology with them, and begin harvesting the stars of their new home. What would this expansion, this harvest, this intergalactic colonization look like to a primitive species like us, looking on from billions of light years away? It would not look like a fleet of ships. It would not look like a war. It would look like a spreading patch of darkness. It would look like the lights, one by one, galaxy by galaxy, going out. It would look like a void. This is the heretical theory. The Boötes Void. 330 million light years wide. A volume of space that should contain 10,000 galaxies, but which now contains only 60. Are we looking at a statistical anomaly? A one in a trillion cosmic accident where the universe just forgot to build anything? Or are we looking at the harvested territory of a Type 3 civilization? Are we staring at the cleared-out domain of an empire of gods who systematically switched off 10,000 galaxies to power their own existence? This is not just wild internet speculation. In the 1980s, astronomers and physicists genuinely considered this. They took the idea seriously. If this was the work of a Type 3 civilization, they must have left behind some trace. The waste heat. The infrared signature of 10,000 harvested galaxies. So they looked. They pointed their most sensitive instruments at the heart of the great nothing. They searched for the faint, warm glow of a trillion Dyson spheres. And what they found is the most chilling part of all. They pointed their most sensitive infrared telescopes at the heart of the great nothing. They were searching for the faint, warm glow of a trillion Dyson spheres, the waste heat of 10,000 harvested galaxies. And they found nothing. Absolute cold, empty nothing. The void was as cold and as dark in the infrared spectrum as it was in the visible. This single observation, this lack of a signal, is perhaps the most terrifying part of the entire story. It completely rules out our simple Type 3 civilization hypothesis. If an intelligence did clear out this space, they did not just turn off the lights and leave the infrastructure behind. They did not leave a single trace of waste heat. This leaves two, even more disturbing possibilities. One, they were an intelligence so advanced that they violate our known laws of thermodynamics, leaving zero thermal signature. A civilization of pure, impossible efficiency. Or two, they did not just harvest the energy. They took the matter with them. They did not just clear the forest, they pulled up the trees, the roots, and the soil itself, leaving behind a 330 million light-year scar. This is where the heretical theory dies, because it is no longer science. 
It is pure, untestable speculation. It becomes a ghost story. Science, to be science, must be testable. The infrared search was the test. And the theory failed. So, we are forced back to the scientific explanation. That improbable, uncomfortable, one in a trillion cosmic accident. The merging of smaller voids. For decades, this was the stalemate, a natural explanation that felt impossible, and an intelligent explanation that was untestable. But what if the Boote's void, this great nothing, is not the real mystery? What if it was just a symptom of a much larger truth about the universe? In recent years, our understanding of the cosmic sponge has deepened. The Boote's void, while shockingly large, is no longer the most significant void we know of. Because we have found another one. One that is far, far larger. And the scariest part? We are inside it. It is called the KBC Void, named for the astronomers Keenan, Barger, and Cowie who identified it. It is not an empty void like Boote's. It is an underdense void. It is a region of the cosmic sponge that is simply, thinner. Less dense than the average. And it is the largest void ever discovered. It is a staggering 2 billion light years across. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, our entire Laniakea supercluster, we are just a few fibers of the sponge, floating inside this colossal, underdense bubble. This discovery is rewriting everything. It is no longer a localized horror story about a monster in the dark. The horror is that we live in the hollow. This discovery is so profound. It might solve the single biggest crisis in modern cosmology, the Hubble tension, the violent disagreement over how fast the universe is actually expanding. If we live in a cosmic valley like the KBC void, it means the pull of gravity on us is less than the average. It means the matter outside the void is pulling us out. This could be skewing all of our measurements. It could explain everything. Next week on Cosmic BO, I am releasing something extraordinary. A video about that very crisis. The Hubble Tension. The universe is expanding, but the numbers do not add up. And the answer might be that we have been measuring from the wrong place all along. Hit that notification bell right now. Because the universe still has secrets to reveal. And you will not want to miss what is coming. So where does this leave us, with the great nothing? The Boote's void was a warning. It was the first time the universe showed us that emptiness was just as important as substance. It was a statistical monster that forced us to question our models. But the Type 3 civilization, that was a human story. We invented a monster to explain a shadow we did not understand. The truth, as it so often is, is far stranger and less personal. What is scarier? A void created by a godlike intelligence we cannot comprehend? Or a void created by nothing at all? A universe that is just random, chaotic, and capable of producing statistical impossibilities like this great nothing simply, by chance? The true horror of the Boote's void is not that it might be full of alien ghosts. The true horror is that it is empty. It is the ultimate symbol of cosmic loneliness. A reminder that the universe is not required to make sense. It is not required to fill its empty spaces. It is a silent, 330 million light year monument to the power of pure, random, unfeeling chance. So here is my final question for you. What do you find more terrifying, an empty void created by a godlike alien empire, or an empty void created by nothing but a random roll of the cosmic dice? Drop your answer in the comments. I cannot wait to see what you think. And if you love this deep dive into the cosmic nothing, check out my video about the Great Attractor. It explores the exact opposite mystery, a place where the universe is impossibly, mysteriously full. The link is in the description, or click the card right, now. This is Cosmic B.O. Until next time, keep looking up.